Welcome to the review of the new DeWalt 60 volt chainsaw DCCS677. This tool comes in three versions. The B version, which is just a tool in a case. The Y1 version, which comes with the 4 amp hour battery and develops 3.5 horsepowers. And the Z1 version, which comes with a 5 amp hour battery and develops 4 horsepowers. The saw comes in a really nice case and what I like about it is that the scabbard comes off so you can transport the chainsaw with the scabbard on. The case comes with enough room to transport two batteries. Here you see the 615 and its slot, there's the charger, and then you can always put a battery in the cradle in the chainsaw itself, even though the wall tells you not to do that. Overall, really nice case. I like how it's organized and there's room for some tools in there as well. So two batteries, I think that's great. There's a couple things I do not like about the case. So for example here, the lid has a slot for a saw chain file. However, most of the standard files don't fit in it. So I'm not quite sure, you know, what the thinking is there. Also, the typical chainsaw tools like this one here from Stiel, it doesn't fit in there either. So that one, I think, is a little bit of a miss. What I do like is the cradle that the batteries sit in. They are surrounded by this slightly softer black plastic, and they are protected against bumps and shocks. And there's a little bit of room for some cooling as well. But what I don't like is that some wood chips can go in there and accumulate, and so I think some sort of a lid or some sort of a mesh on top that would have been better. Kind of like you see on some of the DeWalt lawnmowers where they have this plastic lid or this mesh on top of the batteries. Anyway, I think it's well engineered. I think that somewhat shock absorbing plastic works really well and it fits all the standard 60 volt flex volt batteries. So well done. Another thing I really like about this saw is that it is very well balanced. So here you see two batteries, the big 615 and the smaller 609. And I'll show you how they look inside the cradle there, right? So the 615 sticks out a bit, the 609 fits just right. And if you put the 615, which is really the heaviest battery, and you lift the saw, you see that it's really nicely balanced. Now do the same with the 609, and it also balances really well. And I've used the saw with both of the batteries and they handle really well. By the way, total weight is about 14 to 17 pounds, depending on what battery you use. Another feature that works really well in day-to-day -day use is this little window here on the oil tank. You can see it's very easy to gauge whether you have enough oil left. One thing that doesn't work so well is the multifunction tool that comes with the saw. First of all, I think the tool is too small and then it's stored in this slot in the handle. There's this little plastic tongue that kind of keeps it in there and you can pull it out. Honestly, I think it'll fall out somewhere in the woods and will get lost. And I also think the tool is just too small. So here you see the typical chainsaw multifunction tool like Stiel, Husqvarna, all the other guys have. And you see the DeWalt tool in the front. It just doesn't have that much leverage. It's kind of small. And I think they cheapened out on this one. So I would prefer a full size kind of wrench tool like Steel and the other guys have. On the plus side, I really like the safety features like a very snappy chain break. It's got a great guard for the rear hand. And this tensioning screw here is a solid metal bolt that can serve as a chain catcher just in case. Let's open this up and look at the build quality. So you can see right away, it's got nice bumper spikes there. Everything is metal where there should be metal, right? So these inserts here are metal. The bolts are metal. Everything that I think has a lot of load or is subjected to stress is made out of metal. So that's nice to see. Look at the drive shaft here and look at this tensioning bolt. Really, really nice, solid, you know, this is just really high quality. And that drive shaft, I think this is one of the beefiest ones I've seen in a while. So that's great to see. That should last a very long time. But it's not all perfect. So here you see the chainsaw cover from Stiel and you see those nuts and inserts. They're engineered so they don't fall out. On the other hand, the DeWalt cover 
the nuts and the inserts do fall out and I think they might get lost in the woods in the long term. What I do like is the oil pump. That works really, really well. It's got nice pressure. And if you look at the saw itself, it throws off a really nice, generous amount of oil. The one area that I think is the biggest failure is the choice of saw chain. DeWalt picked a 20 inch 3 8 low profile saw chain, which is really, it's really an odd choice. There are no other third party manufacturers that make 3 8 low profile saw chain in 20 inch lengths. And I hate being dependent on a single vendor for my saw chains. Now, there are workarounds. You can roll your own chain out of bulk chain, or you can buy an 18 inch bar from Oregon and use their 3 8 full size 18 inch chains with that. And at least right now, in the summer of 2022, the vault seems to have difficulties keeping that 20 inch saw chain in stock. So for my performance comparison tests, I actually had to switch to an 18 inch bar with 18 inch saw chain. So let's talk about the performance test. I will compare two gas powered chainsaws from Stiel against the electric chainsaw from the vault. The first chainsaw is the Stiel MS250C. It's a 45cc, about three horsepower chainsaw, kind of entry level model. The second chainsaw is the 261C, which is a mid-range professional model with four horsepowers. And then of course the DeVault chainsaw, which also has about four horsepowers. I want to make sure this is a fair comparison. So the gas chainsaws will have new spark plugs. And of course, all chainsaws will have factory fresh saw chains. All saws get nice bar oil. And of course the gas chainsaws will get freshly mixed gas and the electric chainsaw will get a cool and freshly charged battery. This is the DCB615 battery, which is the larger of the multiple choices. The test lock is a Douglas fir. It's a softwood, but it's one of the hardest and toughest conifers out there. So I think it'll present a good challenge. First up, we have the Steel MS250C. Now in the upper left, you'll see a running timer and the first cut will be in regular speed, and all other subsequent cuts will be sped up so we don't waste too much time. After each cut, you will see the time in the upper left in red. And then after we're done with a chainsaw, I'll show a summary with the average cut times. The MS250C struggles a little bit. It's just not powerful enough for such big of a log. And uh, you can kind of hear by the sound that I almost stalled it a few times. But I made it through the first log in about 44 seconds. Not too bad. So now I'm speeding up the video of cut number 2 and number 3 so we don't waste too much time on this. But still, the saw struggles a little bit. It definitely doesn't have enough power and torque for such a big log. But with both cuts I was able to stay under 50 seconds. So this is cut number 2, almost done. And after that, again, I'll speed up cut number three by 200%. By the way, one thing that always makes me nervous is when I see chainsaw test videos with logs that just aren't secured. Sometimes people step on them or have them on the ground or just, you know, in just very unsafe settings. So please, if you do cut logs, make sure they're secured and they don't go anywhere. So we're finally done with the third cut and here's the summary. Again, new spark plugs, factory fresh saw chains, freshly mixed gas, all of that. Average time of 47.82 seconds. Not too shabby, but not great either. Let's see if the more powerful, more professional MS261C can do better. Even though this saw only has about one horsepower more, it has a lot more torque. So same saw chain, you know, same fresh gas, fresh spark plugs and all of that. And it just cuts to this log like butter. Overall, great saw cuts to this log in just above 20 seconds. So here's the final time, 23.10. And let's do cut number two and cut number three at double the speed so we don't waste too much time. 
By the way, if you listen to the audio of the saw, you can hear that it never bogs down, it just keeps going strong. Okay, last cut is done, and as you can see, the MS-261C was twice as fast. Average time of 22.02 seconds. This is going to be very, very tough to beat. Now keep in mind, this is one of Steel's upper mid-range professional level models. Now we're going to run a DeVault electric chainsaw, and after each cut, I'll pause the timer in the upper left, flash the cut time in red, and then we'll move on to the next cut. The first cut is at regular speed, and all subsequent cuts will be sped up again by 200%. With this chainsaw, I made four cuts, so I have a really good base of comparison. One thing to note is that this is the 3 8 low profile saw chain, so the saw chain doesn't remove quite as much wood as the full size saw chains from steel. But what you can see in the video is that the saw does a really nice job ejecting all the sawdust on the rear. You can see that there. So it's very well engineered and I have to say the saw felt great. Lots of torque and very little vibration compared to a traditional gas powered saw. The run times were surprisingly low. I was very happy with that. By the way, one note of caution. If you do many, many cuts in a row without any break, the battery might overheat. So what I do is I keep a second battery around just in case. So here are the results for the DeWall chainsaw. Of course, with a freshly charged and cooled battery. Average cut time, 25.87 seconds. So just a little slower than the big professional gas chainsaw, but way faster than the entry level gas chainsaw quite amazing. So let's sum it up. What are the pros? First of all, the build quality is amazing. It has metal where it matters. This thing feels very solid. The warranty, by the way, is great. Three-year warranty, one-year free service, and 90 days money back. So I feel you can't really go wrong with it. Performance is great, on par with gas of similar size. The safety features are awesome. Snappy chain brake, Great start and thumb switch combo, and the rear handguard is nice. With different sizes of 60 volt flex batteries, it's balanced well, and the oil level is easy to check with that little transparent window. The bumper spikes on both sides of the chain are nice, they work well, but there's room for improvement, and I'll talk about that in a second. And the chain lubrication is awesome. No leaks, by the way, from the reservoir cover. That was a problem in the past. And the battery cradle, I think, protects the battery quite well. And in the case, you can carry one battery in the saw and one in the case, even though the wall tells you not to do that for some reason. Not sure. Now, the things I don't like about this saw are mostly small nitpicky things and one big one. First of all, that supply tensioning tool is just too small. I think they cheapened out on this one. Plus, the slot that it resides in is not a great spot. I think eventually it'll fall out and you'll lose that in the woods. So I think there's a better solution. The bumper spike should be more aggressive, especially the bottom spike, so you can really let the saw bite into the wood and pivot it on that bottom spike. And then the nuts and the sleeves of that cover plate are not engineered very well. There's better solutions that prevent them from falling out, like steel and others do. If you ever have to take that plate off in the woods, there's a good chance you'll lose some of the hardware. The battery cradle can collect some wood chips, but that's a really minor thing. And the batteries can overheat if you don't take a break. So my recommendation is to keep a spare at hand. Now this last bullet is a big one. There are no other makers of a 20 inch, 3 8 low profile saw chain. So you're stuck with DeWalt and there are no alternatives. Now there are some workarounds, like switching to an 18 inch bar and doing another third party chain, or making your own 20 inch 3 8 saw chain out of bulk chain. But for a homeowner, this is not acceptable. So I really hope the vault can remedy their supply situation and get this 20 inch chain back into stock quickly. In summary, I think this is a great chainsaw, very well engineered, great safety features, a few minor nitpicks, and a poor choice of saw chain. The power is amazing, but it doesn't quite have the endurance of an equivalent gas chainsaw because the batteries will overheat if you don't take any breaks. Overall, it's a very high quality product, and I'll give it 4 stars. If you found this useful, please like and subscribe. Thank you.